Hi, my name is Tim Wimple. I'm a landscape photographer from Joplin, Missouri, and today I'm going to show you how to use uh, lab mode or LAB mode in Photoshop. Okay, let's get started. All right, I have an, ima an image open here. Uh, I've got several layers already in this image, and what I'm wanting to do is I want to add some color into the sky. It's pretty neutral gray. You can see just little hints of maybe magenta and blue in there, and we want to bring those out. Uh, one way we could do that, obviously, is to come down to Hue and Saturation and just crank our saturation up and crank it way up there. And then we could go in with a black brush, set it to 100%. And our layer mask here, let's take that out of the trees and the grass here because it's obviously way overdone. Although, I kind of liked the way that looked as far as it kind of looks like the sun might be shining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my opacity down to about, let's say 25, and switch to white here, and let's just give a couple of taps here. Just kind of give an indication that the sun is shining there. All right. That's one way of doing it, and a good way of doing it. But let's take a look at another option. Yeah, let's turn that off. And I'm going to click down here, and I'm going to use a shortcut here that you definitely should learn for Photoshop because you'll use it a lot, and that is the Control-Alt-Shift-E. A lot of keys to hold down there. But basically what that does is take everything visible and puts it on another layer. So all we have done is copied everything and put it on a single layer. And the reason that we're doing that is, is because if we go into lab mode, um, let's say we just went over here and we said lab mode. It's going to ask you if you want to rasterize, and um, it will pretty much wipe out everything you've done here that has to do with color, if you have curves or levels, and you just really don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you a workaround here. So let's just cancel that. So we made our copy here, and then we're going to to right click on the layer and we're going to go to convert to smart object. Now when we double click on this smart object it's going to take us into it's actually going to open the image up in its own window here. So now we have a new image window here and now we can go in and change the mode to lab or LAB. And what we're going to do is come down to our curves, and it's going to look a little bit different than it does in the RGB mode. In lab mode, your curves has a lightness channel, a red chan or A channel, and a B channel. And the A and B channel are your color channels, and the lightness is just your brightness levels. And that's one of the unique things about lab mode, is you can actually adjust your colors and not affect the brightness and darkness of the pixels. And the same goes for, uh, you can adjust the brightness and darkness of the pixels and not affect the colors. Whereas if you do that in RGB mode, you will affect the color slightly. There are subtle differences, but um, they can be important. I'm not going to adjust the uh, brightness here so we can make some comparisons. I'm going to go to the A channel here. And what we're going to do, it's kind of like um, a curves adjustment 
that you would do to add contrast. Only we're going to add contrast to color, and that means we're going to steepen this curve. So I'm just going to pull these over, even with these marks here. And let's go to the B channel and do the same thing. Okay, so as you can see, we pumped a lot of color into this image by doing this move here. And we are going to uh, close this, and it's going to ask us if we want to save it, and we're going to say yay, yes. We're going to say yay. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to move this up on top here so we can compare this. Here's a, another little quick tip for you. If you want to duplicate this mask, just hold down your Alt and drag it up, and that will add the mask there for you. All right, so why go to all that trouble? Subtle, but definitely visible difference. If we look at the hue and saturation level here, you can see that it has changed the brightness of the image. It's the, the purple and the blues have darkened the sky down here. Um, I don't know if you can tell too much, but the, the yellows will often uh, brighten up and your purples and blues will darken as opposed to the LAB mode, which you don't see any differences in the brightness and darkness, but you do see a difference in the color. So if we click that on and off, you'll see there's a lot more purple and blues, but we don't have that brightness shift. So that is the main difference between using the hue and saturation and using your LAB mode is that you won't have a shift in your brightness and darkness of your pixels when you add color to them. Let me show you another one here that's uh, something that you'll see. Well, I just closed the wrong one here. Same changes. Let's go and open up this image here. Okay, one of the really popular, or I don't know if it's popular, but it should be probably, um, uses for LAB is Red Rock Canyons. Um, when you have a similar colors and you want to try to, to bring out those uh, differences, LAB mode is a really good mode. We are going to... Um, duplicate this layer, and we're going to have to rasterize it, take it out of the smart object there, but then we're going to go right back in and convert it to a smart object. If we didn't do that, it would just, when we double clicked on it, it would take us right back to Camera Raw, and we want to be able to just open it up in another window and change the mode. So once we have that done, then we can double click on it, say OK. And here we are in a new window. And again, we're going to go up to um, Image, Mode, LAB, Color. And we're going to bring up our curves again. And we're going to go to the A. <coughs> and move it over, just like we did in the other one. We're just going to try to pull out these different layers of rock here with this move. Okay. Right away you can see how the different striations in the rock are, are jumping out a lot more now. Um, one thing I need to mention about the LAB mode is as long as your line here is intersecting right through the center of the graph, you won't have any color shifts. It'll just be like an increase in saturation. All right. 
So on both L A L and or A and B, we have the line intersecting right through the middle. But if you want to add a color cast to it, you can by moving the line just above, which is going to give you a yellow, more yellow color, or you can move it just below, which is going to give you more of a blue. And in this particular case, I think I'm going to just nudge it just a little bit towards yellow. And I might, in the A, um, going above gives you magenta, going below gives you cyan. So I think I might just barely move it up and just give us a little magenta cast in that too. Okay. Close that, and we're going to close this and say save changes. Yes. Now, obviously, this is way over the top in saturation, and I like to just go ahead and just make it outrageous to start with because it gives you some options later. Um, and we can always cut that back. So, I'm going to mask that out right now, and one way, quick way of doing that is if you hold down the Alt key when you click on the Mask button down here, it adds a black mask, and that masks everything out, so it's like you just turn the lights off on that layer so you can't see anything in there. But we want to see a little bit, so we're going to turn the lights on by adding white. And let's take this up to about maybe 50 or thereabouts, and we're painting on the mask, and we're just going to go in here and add some of that color we just created in LAV mode. All right, it's pretty good. And like I said, if you know, if it's over the top, that just kind of gives you a few more options. And you can always cut it back to with uh, opacity if you want. Now, the great thing about doing it with as a smart object, let's say we didn't like that uh, yellow or magenta cast that we gave to it, we can also we can just go back in here, click on it. That takes us right back into our curve here in LAB, and we can go in and we can make adjustments. So let's say we want to neutralize that magenta there a little bit. And let's neutralize that yellow. Okay. Then just close it again. So by using the smart object uh, this way, you, you don't have to rasterize your image. You don't have to uh, flatten it. All, everything's fine. The only disadvantage is is that all your edits below that are not going to be are not going to affect that anything above it. So it is kind of a block in your workflow. So I mean, as long as you know what it does, you can make the decision as to whether it's worth that or not. Um, and like I said, if we just came in here, let's show you this again. We just came in with the hue and saturation, and we crank that up. Let's see, about there. And let's use that trick where we use the Alt and drag that down. You can see subtle changes. Where we're using the hue and saturation, you can see that the yellows get a little brighter. Um, and if we had blues in there, you could see they get a little darker. So that is the major difference between just adding saturation to the image as opposed to going to LAB is that you keep the brightness and darkness levels. All right, I hope that helped you out, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on my next YouTube or video and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll get the uh, my upcoming videos. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.